From the plot revolving around a third-rate critic from a porno rag to filming starting sometime around 2024, Quentin Tarantino reveals new details on new movie. The movie critic lays its cards on the table with its title, though the director hasn't revealed a lot about the story besides that. At the heart of the movie will be a critic, and for a long time, folks were convinced that the movie would be about Pauline Kael, the legendary firebrand that Tarantino counts as one of his inspirations. But there's nothing prestigious about the main character of his movie, who's actually inspired by, in the director's own words, a third-rate critic from a porno rag the Tarantino used to read when he was working at a laundromat. While he didn't reveal the critic's name, Quentin said that the guy was foul-mouthed and angry and had no filter on his opinions. When he looked into the critic and his life later, he found that he'd passed away from alcohol problems in his late 30s. Sounds like a Tarantino character to me. Tarantino's critic will be inspired by people like Howard Stern and Travis Bickle. Yep, the guy from Taxi Driver. You can expect him to have a potty mouth and a borderline unhinged take on the stuff he reviews. The film will take place in 1977, which was a banner year for Hollywood, since that was the year Close Encounters of a Third Kind came out as did a little-known movie called Star Wars. That should tell you almost everything you need to know about what the movie's really about since Tarantino's been interested in film history lately. Once Upon a Time was a wistful movie, since he took the chance to correct a historical tragedy by rewriting the murder of Sharon Tate. But there was a clear sense that Tarantino wanted to tell a coming-of-age story for movies. When the movie kicks off, change is in the air and Rick Dalton's character arc is all about finding his footing in the changing landscape at the end of a long and successful career. He also contrasted the bright optimism of the movies of the time with the Manson family, a bunch of weirdos so dark and disturbed, you wouldn't believe people like them could actually exist in the real world. Once Upon a Time also showed us an actor's perspective of Hollywood with long hours of tough work and actors like Rick being worried and insecure about their fame. The world was a simpler place in the 60s and Rick's troubles might sound really quaint to the stars that had come after him. A lot of things changed as the 60s rolled into the 70s and the movie critic will explore the new waves of cinema, this time through the eyes of a critic. If Once Upon a Time was the coming-of-age story, the movie industry will be all grown up in the movie critic. The idea of an unhinged film critic taking us through the new waves actually perfect because this movie should be a lot more cynical than the last one. This era saw the birth of the blockbuster with Jaws, the first big summer flick, coming out two years before the time frame of the movie critic. At the same time, there were also a lot of foreign imports playing in American theaters, exposing the audience to artsy movies from Europe and Asia and inspiring a whole generation of directors. Drugs became a much bigger part of the Hollywood scene too. So if the main character only has an alcohol problem, he might be lucky. While Hollywood itself had changed, Quentin's perspective for this movie is different too. Movie critics are a lot like the average Joes who watch movies, except they get paid to write their opinions. So our window into the movie industry will be a lot more relatable this time around. While he's addressing these topics more directly now, his love of movies has been there this whole time, and that's a big reason why he has so many fans. He makes them love movies. His very first film was Reservoir Dogs, which was a love letter to heist movies with a dash of satire. He spent the rest of his career putting his own quirky spin on classic movie genres. Kill Bill was his take on the samurai movie. Death Proof was a slasher horror, while Inglorious Bastards was a very strange World War II movie, and Django Unchained and The Hateful Eight were bloody and gruesome westerns. When you think of a Tarantino film, the first things that might come to mind are his awesome music choices and, of course, the violence. But these are all genuinely thoughtful movies that can spark your interest in their genres. Even Martin Scorsese, hater of Marvel movies, acknowledges these as cinema, even though most cinema flicks have way smaller fake blood budgets. Most fans would tell you that Pulp Fiction is the best because it doesn't lean into any one genre, instead putting all of his quirkiness on full display. With all that in mind, I think it's pretty cool he's ending his career with a pair of movies that explore key eras of the movie history that inspired him so much. Oh yeah, this will be the very last Tarantino movie, 
And he means it this time. For years, Quentin's been saying that his career will end when he makes 10 movies or he turns 60, whichever comes first. Well, his 60th birthday came first, but he's still going for 10 movies. The release of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was a bittersweet time for a lot of Tarantino fans. Since it's technically his 10th movie, Tarantino later assured everyone that it was actually his 9th movie, because as far as he's concerned, the duo of Kill Bill movies count as just one. While promoting the movie critic, though, he's been talking a lot about what things will look like once the movie is out. It's not that he'll disappear off the face of the earth, but he hasn't locked down what comes after his career as director. He's had some success in the literary world, having published a novelization of Once Upon a Time and a book of essays titled Cinema Speculation, so that might be where his life takes him next. I've talked enough about the story, but what's the cast looking like? Well, it's still a mystery right now, but Quentin said that the main character will be a white man around 35 years old. Also, he'll specifically be casting an American actor, since he feels like the trend of British and Australian actors playing American characters is bad for movies. With those pointers in mind, fans probably shouldn't expect him to cast Tim Roth or Christoph Waltz, two of his favorite actors, in the lead role. I think it's also pretty clear that Samuel L. Jackson isn't gunning for part, though I'd be very surprised if he didn't turn up at all. From his favorite actors, the only ones left over are Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, but they starred in his last movie, so that's a long shot. In fact, as all of Tarantino's movies take place in the same universe, those two might end up cameoing as Cliff Booth and Rick Dalton, their characters from Once Upon a Time. They may not be the main character, but I think we can look forward to most of these guys turning up in some role or the other, along with Margot Robbie and Uma Thurman, if she's friends with him again. Tarantino was set to cast the movie in 2023, so does that mean the movie's close to release? The director expects to start filming the movie early in 2024, and based on how long it took Once Upon a Time to go from shooting to release, we might just see the movie critic that very fall. But I wouldn't want to get your hopes up so early because stuff can go sideways during a shoot, and the release might end up pushed to winter 2024 or even 2025. One of the things that's gone sideways are 2023's Hollywood strikes, with the Writers Guild and Screen Actors Guild shutting down to fight the studios. While Tarantino's made a lot of progress on the script, if it was less than 100% done, it's going to stay that way until the strike breaks. Even if the script was finished, though, you can't make a movie without actors. So, one way or another, Tarantino might end up missing his early 2024 time frame to start filming. Before SAG-AFTRA joined the striking party, studios were reportedly planning on going the distance to starve the Writers Guild out. But with both of them striking at once, the skies might clear up by the end of 2023. Hat might leave room for Tarantino to meet his targets. But all I can say for sure is that Hollywood's in serious trouble right now. So here you have it from filming starting sometime around 2024 to the plot revolving around a third-rate critic from a porno rag. That's everything Quentin Tarantino revealed about his new movie.